Uh, I'm Philip Meixner from ProSieben Sat1, and today I really have the privilege to talk about two topics I genuinely like. Uh, first of all is TV media. It's an amazing uh, tool still, and the other one is investment. And I hope to convince you today um, that TV media is actually a very, very good currency uh, to contribute value to portfolio companies. First of all, I'm going to give you a short overview on the whole topic, and uh, later on I will enrich this uh, little workshop uh, with a couple of um, case studies we conducted, also to see really how TV media works and what leverage you have once you use TV in order to really mount value into your companies. If I had a choice, I would ask you to remember this slide. Because this is the investment hypothesis we had when we started TV media investments four years ago. We predicted that TV ads create massive impact on digital business. And today, we prove it. We prove it with almost 60 uh, companies we invested in. And we've shown really that it's driving sales, driving conversions. We all prove that. So this statement, uh, which is from one of our CEOs of a portfolio company, um, is actually summing up everything we did and what we assumed to happen. It was always doubted that TV kind of will last. But um, how to say it here, you see TV is absolutely not that. In average, this is German numbers, real German numbers. Uh, people in Germany watch three and a half hours of telly every day. And you can compare it with all other uh, media sources. Online, around about two hours. People read 30 minutes the newspaper. It's, uh, it's still significant, but TV really um, is the one medium with the highest reach, the highest frequency, and it's actually the only one, apart from some viral aspects in mobile-based um, viral ads, to actually um, conquer a target group in a tremendous short amount of time. So how do media invests actually work? If you look at it, we tend to give media, sometimes cash, to companies. And to make it quite simple, in return, we get either revenue shares or shares in the companies. And uh, of course, we try to make synergetic values out of that. Once you uh, have a chance to um, address the right target group, you give cash to grow. Um, it's just another power than if you just give uh, one of each. To sum it up here, here are some of the key findings uh, we had in the last four years on the value of media. Just look at the direct traffic impacts we have. We have a significant uplift in traffic in the time the companies are on air, like really advertising on air. Or in a mobile business, we see a tremendous uplift in the downloads in the App Store. And of course, we see a much higher ranking in the apps in the app stores. We also see that SEM, search engine marketing means, are getting much more effective and efficient. We see that cost per click in the SEM suddenly drop once you go on television. This is all due to an increase in the branded traffic. Of course, people still continue searching on Google, but of course, the search pattern changes from more generous um, keywords towards more brand-related keywords. And of course, you're going to see that in your pocket. Um, SEO, of course, your whole figures in SEO tend to improve because you have much more branded traffic. You have a traffic uplift generally. And of course, Google um, takes this as a very positive sign, and so your SEO visibility goes up. We have un like a lot of other impacts. For example, reactivation rates. Once you're much more of a subscription-based model with newsletters you send out every day, we saw, we saw much better open rates. Uh, better click-through rates. We saw um, uplift in the conversion rates of our assets. And of course, uh, we also saw that the bounce rates actually um, go down a little bit. So all over, media investment is not just the sudden uplift uh, when you go on air. It's all those elements that benefit you in your marketing campaign. And TV is not standalone. We see here, it benefits your spends on Google. It benefits your CRM activities you do uh, in the newsletter marketing. We also saw that it goes that your Facebook activity goes up. So it all together 
is a very nice marketing mix, but it's mainly triggered from the impacts you have through TV. So um, all this experience made us one of the leading media investors on a global scale. This is just like empty words, but I'm going to prove you um, that we are. Looking at this, you see we invested in the last four years 1.5 or 1.6 billion euros of media, 200 million euros in cash. We executed roughly 100 deals. We um, opened offices in the German-speaking region, in the US, in Israel, in France, in the UK. So we are getting more and more active to act as a global player. And of course, we also um, co-invested and uh, worked with some of the most um, prominent venture capitalists, such as Kleiner Perkin, Andreessen, and you just name them. It's just a short uh, list of people we work together with. And if you look at our power we have in-house, it's also quite substantial. In Germany, which are like the German-speaking region, which is our core market, we reach every day roughly 30% market share, which is um, actually a quite stunning number. Um, we reach uh, on a monthly base pretty much all of the 42 million households we have in Germany. We have a big uh, online platform with uh, 250 million uniques a month. And we have a strong ecosystem that enriches all the TV power we can give and kind of surrounds it in a, in a very smart way. Also, um, we built up a pan-European uh, media alliance, which gives us assets and uh, airtime in other uh, legislations, uh, for example, in the UK, in the Nordics, in France. Um, so we can help our assets to actually scale in other countries and uh, create a platform for them uh, in order to uh, become pan-European. Just having a short glimpse in our current portfolio, you see we invest from minorities up to majorities, and um, we also invest internationally. Looking um, at our minorities, for example, with Jarbone, where we just acquired um, a stake, just fab. Um, all very interesting assets where we help them to kind of have a kickstart in Europe. Starting from Germany or the German-speaking region, of course, we also offer the opportunity to now scale uh, throughout Europe. What I just already introduced quickly, um, we started um, a media alliance as a launch pad for, uh, for assets to kind of get TV media all over Europe. As we worked a lot with digital companies, we know that uh, they are quite borderless. So of course, TV, even though it's a local market, we need to get uh, inventory um, all over uh, the continent. For example, in the UK, uh, we have a partnership with Channel 4, an amazing channel um, that really kind of fits our target groups very well. With MTG and the Nordics, uh, we cover pretty much all of the northern parts of Europe. We have TFR in France, a very strong channel there. Um, TF, uh, TVN in Poland, also a very nice channel. And also in the south, uh, we have with Antenna Group and uh, Goran uh, quite, quite profound players. Summing it up, we have more than, we reach more than 200 million households, um, which uh, pretty much covers 80% of Europe right now. In order to um, also facilitate um, big players from the US, from Israel, to come to Europe, uh, we opened offices in the US, in San Francisco, um, in New York, and in Tel Aviv. Um, to kind of show that Europe is just a really a kickstart for them. We show them what we have, um, we have representatives out there, uh, and we also support them in anything uh, they need for a, for a start in, in our countries here. But when we're talking about TV, it's a bigger universe than just going on air. I'm talking about um, finding the right testimonials, like a good partner for the brand talking about performance marketing, because as I already mentioned, people don't stop searching on Google just because you're on television, but synchronizing those effects of um, going on television, synchronizing with your search um, and your SEM, there's a real value potential in it. And of course, um, we have the BI and uh, the experience 
to really get the last grip out of that. That's why uh, we introduced very strong TV analytics. We actually know what works. We collect data from more than 60 companies and pretty much know what kind of uh, spot works in which environment for which company. And all this data we gather and uh, we create recommendations uh, for our partners to really help them improve over time. Moreover, companies coming over to Europe often lack a little bit of the local understanding, the local network, um, also like good HR capacities, and so we give operational ground support, which means starting with a body lease up to really helping them throughout our network to get important contacts that might help. And last but not least, we help them to adapt their creatives to the local needs. We um, help them creating spots, producing them, and in the end, we also test them and improve them over time. And we all do this in a very fast pace, as uh, we know the digital companies need this in order to really be successful. So now I'm going to some case studies. I think this is the most crucial thing, because everything else um, is just like a nice explanation. But maybe you should see what television actually is able to do. It's a case of Zalando. I think everybody knows the company. Um, we engaged with Zalando quite early in 2010. Zalando was still like a young and fast-growing company with around 20 million euros revenue when they first went on air. It's very interesting to see that before Zalando went on air, the search term for shoes online was literally not existent. The market for shoes online was not there yet. Once Zalando launched with the campaign, you see it's a tiny black line that the search volume for shoes online significantly go up. But what really is thriving is that the keyword Salando replaces the search term shoes online. This is the keyword that goes up. So what we see here and what we learn here is, once you don't have a market for a product, TV is the best mean to actually create the market and place the incumbent player in there. Because you name the market. The market's name for shoes online at that time was Salando. And everybody knows how successfully it got exited just recently. Also, just uh, last year, um, we did a major invest with uh, Jarbone, the health wearable company. And um, we started with them in Q4 to stimulate uh, the, the Christmas, uh, Christmas sales. It was very interesting because um, Jarbone is a very data-driven company and uh, with a fantastic product pipeline for the next years to come. Uh, so um, we provide them with a substantial media volume that will actually help every product they're going to launch in the next uh, two or three years to really get their, get their face time. And so we are really looking forward to work with them in the, also in the further times. And you see they have the Jambox, they have the, uh, the variables, and they're going to have a lot of other very interesting products soon. What we saw here was, just in the comparing 2013 to 2014, we have a seven times sales uplift when we started to go on air. This is real numbers. This is really significant. And what we also see is that the engagement with the product went up heavily. Engaging for Jabon means that you really use the product. It's just not a present. You buy it, but you actually use it. And here we see a factor 1.5 of users more than buyers. So people really engage with the product. And this is very interesting, because this means that you're going to have long-lasting customer relationships. This is a very early and good indication for that. And also here, um, we got very nice flowers from the CEO, uh, really stating that we were able to really support this company to grow in the market, to actually find the angle in, because it is a complicated market in Germany for those kind of products. But I think uh, we were able to um, to help them here tremendously. And uh, of course, we try to support them also in the growth in other European countries. One of the, um, I would say, success stories we also proven is um, the Shopkick example. It's a very interesting company um, which needs a lot of local know-how in order to grow. So when Shopkick, when we started uh, our business relationship and our investment with Shopkick, the first thing we had to do, actually create a launchpad for them. They haven't been active here, they had no contacts, they had no office, they had pretty much nothing. It was a plain field for them. So um, we, first of all, 
gave them the major contacts we have in the retail space, which for a big um, media corporate for us is quite easy as we work with all those players. If it is Carstart, OB, Douglas, we all know them through normal um, television sales, right? So, of course, those contacts we leverage into this partnership. So, we created those partners to be also clients of Shopcake. Then, um, for the whole team building, we were the ones to kind of choose out of a huge pool of potential candidates the right guys to grow this business with the, with the necessary backgrounds uh, in retail in digital business and also we supported them permanently on ground. When we launched Shopkick in Germany in the end, we already had more than 3,000 point of sales where we could kind of show the product and um, when we started on air, we generated more than 500,000 uh, users of this product uh, in the first two months after launch. Just going to see this here. It was not existent before we launched TV, and immediately the downloads in the App Store went up, and um, we created with a very smart campaigning actually a super impact on the, uh, on the case. And here again, uh, we got some very nice uh, comments from the CEO, and it was very good to work with him here because I think the case proves that we can work, even though we are a big corporate, very entrepreneurial with a very strong spirit in that. It's not only the pure digital companies that can benefit from it, but also a fashion company uh, such as One Piece. One Piece, a Scandinavian company that uh, has those overall onesies uh, you wear. Um, it was, um, it was not in fashion when we started to work with them, even though it was in fashion already in the Scandinavics uh, in the States. Um, we created, a, I would say, a minor campaigning with them just to see how it works. And um, actually, we had some very good effects on it. Because in the time we were on air, the sales on the web shop six-folded, which is really good. And it was a lasting effect. When we stopped going on air, we almost doubled the sales uh, compared to the benchmark period the year before. And um, the same is really if you look at the transactions. It's like a sudden increase, and what is really important that uh, we created like a stable sales uplift over time. We have like 184% what we measured. And um, of course, it's like a product where you kind of see that it's not only the direct sales uplift, but really the constant um, brand awareness and the establishment of a product in the market is what counts and what actually creates a quite big ROI on investor, like a ROI uh, on the media campaign. And also here, um, One Piece is a typical candidate to grow throughout Europe uh, with our support and the support of the Alliance, we found it. Here we have an example that is undisclosed by name, but it's a very big uh, company already, also an online company in the lifestyle segment. And uh, what is interesting, um, thanks to TV, um, we created a three times uplift uh, in orders just in one year. We invested around about um, a list price of 10 million uh, into this company and we were able to significantly A, um, create an uplift, we increased the baskets, um, we increased the conversion rates, like everything we had, uh, or what I explained before in the overview, actually is, uh, is applicable here. And um, so we are still working there, and uh, of course the numbers are still very good and improving. So we are quite confident uh, that we're going to have a very nice investment here. Another company from the lifestyle segment, it's very interesting here, as you see, um, how TV works in the first place, like going on air, you see the gray uh, bars is like the time you are on TV. You see that um, you go like in the pre-TV area, like you have like it's uh, index on 100 and you see once you go on air, you have an uplift of more than 100 percent. And um, if you make a flighting strategy, which means you go on air, you go off you go on and off again for a couple of times, you see that over time you really um, ramp yourself up to more than three times more traffic than you used to have before you started TV. And the good thing is, even though you stop being on TV, you still mount your traffic. And what we measured here is that uh, from the starting time, we increased uh, the permanent level of, uh, of traffic 
two times five, uh, 2.5 times roughly. So it's really, and this is all counting into the ROI. So in the end, this investment is highly positive. And interesting enough is you see here the cost per clicks on the uh, right side that are um, out of SAM spendings. Starting with also an index 100, you see how it drops, and it's all due to the sudden increase of brand traffic. After the first campaign, half of the traffic switched already to brand traffic, and over time, even more. Like, and I think it's quite, uh, quite obvious um, how you create value offside the pure uplift from uh, television. It's also really the cost base you have to consider once you go uh, and spend your money on Google. Here also a very interesting example that uh, straight away produced quite a nice ROI. Um, we had a, a case here where once you spent one real dollar, you got uh, one dollar thirty or thirty four back uh, immediately. And here you see a very nice uh, correlation between the media pressure, which is the gray bars, um, and the real uplift of traffic. It's strongly correlated. It's a direct impact. You can always create direct um, impact campaigns by making calls to action, by um, creating the, um, the immediate pressure to buy so, and, or to, to bring in a sudden price drops and whatever. You have a very good um, tool set of, um, of possibilities to actually bring the consumer to go on your website. And here we see once you are really going on air heavily, immediately the branded traffic goes up. You just see a slight uplift in the non-branded traffic but branded traffic, which is really the good one, the one you don't have to pay for, or you have to pay much less, is, uh, is actually the value driver here. And even though you kind of, what we did here, you see it, we started very heavy, we went down a little bit by pressure, and then we increased pressure again by the end of the campaign. You see that uh, the impetus is still here, and people immediately react again on the same stimulus. It's a typical example of a smart flighting strategy that got most out of the uh, campaign. Here in real numbers, you saw that in average, um, the company had to face like, yeah, almost double the visits every day, uh, which was operationally not that simple, but still they managed it quite well. And um, especially if you see uh, the uplift in branded, in branded traffic, it's six times more branded traffic than in the beginning. In the beginning when we started, branded traffic was at roughly 20%, and it increased to almost 50%. And of course, this is a very, very big value that can only be created with television. So those are, from my side, the main examples I want to share with you. So if you have any questions, I think it's a very good time now to ask them, please. Okay, maybe the first question. Um, when we, um, we negotiate the contracts really individually uh, with every company. When we say, okay, we contribute media, we uh, align in a certain amount of media they might need. Uh, for that, we have professional media planners that uh, kind of find the right sizing. And then uh, we look at the valuations, we look kind of what the counter value, and um, then we create our participation out of that. And seeing how those models work. Sometimes uh, we kind of give plain media, say, okay, that it is, that, that's it, you just get the media, you don't have to pay anything. Sometimes we say we add a revenue share model on top of it, so we hedge ourselves a little bit. Um, it always depends on the needs of the company and also the capabilities. For example, a very young, very fast-growing startup might not have the funds actually to pay revenue shares, so we might apply a different model to that. And a very late-stage company, of course, might not have a cash constraint, uh, but might balance their P&L a little bit. So we're going to find always solutions that are very suitable in this specific case. So it's, in the end, it's quite smart to invest. So, further questions? Please. Hmm? Um, Shopkick, for example, like it's about app investments. Um, we, um, we measured uh, some of um, our corporations that are with, with apps, and we saw actually quite some good impact, and Shopkick is a very nice example because people have to download the application on their smartphone, and um, 
we were able to, in two months, create 500,000 downloads for a commercial application. So it's not like a game where it's actually quite viral. Like every time you have to kind of have a certain um, engagement to actually download, TV creates a very nice stimulus on that. And we see this in various cases uh, we executed in the last years that uh, um, really seeing the real costs, we are not much more uh, or less expensive than a traditional um, distributor of apps. If you see the downloads. Yes, please. Of course, um, we have, uh, I would say we have a very strong investment strategy. A, um, we invest in clusters. For example, uh, we see what kind of um, product families uh, we think are most suitable to proceed that eins as a group. We already um, found travel, and especially online travel, to be a fantastic add-on to our core business. That's why I invested around that. Uh, we bought um, Billiger Mietwagen, like a car rental company, like a, a platform for that. Um, we bought Vecti. With Tropo, we have an online travel agency. And we tried to follow the whole customer journey around this topic because we can feed it from any source. And of course, we can place it on TV and kind of put the emotions and the passion that this medium still gives to people in order to kind of place our products and our companies favorable. So this is an example where we uh, think in clusters. And of course, we know that um, TV mainly works uh, with consumer-facing companies that have a brand-related topic, right? So um, today, we wouldn't invest in just the next um, e-commerce shop because it wouldn't give any added value. Or we wouldn't invest in an eBay a power seller, for example, because there's no value for us as a brand creator. So we always look either for the number one, number two, or number three player in the market where brand actually uh, makes a difference. So, did I, did I help you here? <laughs> Thanks. Further questions? One more. Okay. Um, of course, we, we do have, I would say, this, this tension, but um, for us, it's more about a communicative uh, topic. Uh, of course, um, we don't uh, want to um, kind of disenable business making. And uh, we see ourselves also as a s sort of sales agency, just that in return, we get shares and not straight money. Of course, it's in the end of the day, it's a value question. What is more valuable? Having a, a good portfolio of companies or having straight cash in? So it's uh, a case-by-case -case decision we take. And of course, we also see if there's any broader um, issue that needs to be addressed. For example, that there used to be big spenders with us already on another side and uh, or that might be locked with an agency, just for example. Yes, please. Um, like our companies where we work with, um, we tend to do um, very straightforward deals, uh, like direct, uh, direct deals with the companies. And of course, we encourage them also to, uh, to use other, um, advite, um, like other inventory from um, other media sources. So we are actually um, we are very supportive in, for example, aligning their online spends uh, with the TV spending and optimizing here. We are also um, very happy if they find out new and viral ways on how to promote further. So we don't see the other media channels in any way as competition for us. It's much more um, of an, a very smart add-on and a synergetic value that you can only create when you play smart around the whole uh, universe of media. But of course, just the speed, frequency, and reach of TV, it's unbeatable. That's just a fact. Please. Yeah, um, our European alliance um, was actually like, and it's good that you bring that up because it was always the idea to say digital business models 
are borderless, more or less. People can just go online, buy it, it's immediately available. So um, that's why we said, okay, if, um, if you only support in Germany or Austria or Switzerland, it might not really serve the company in the long run. When they have real growth ambitions, they need to grow also media-wise. So um, that's why we um, kind of uh, partnered up with a couple of channels in the UK, uh, France, and a couple of other countries, uh, and also educated them by the idea of what media investment actually is and why it contributes value. And this is uh, for us very important that A, we can help them, uh, like our companies, to grow internationally, but also in the other way around. If, for example, a nice UK company and a very promising UK company wants to enter the, um, uh, the, uh, the German-speaking market, we would create this launchpad for them they need there. So it's, um, it's a vice versa uh, process, and we try, this, we try to establish this all over Europe, and um, maybe also soon in the US and Asia. Let's see, we are really confident with this model. It's a very strong uh, value proposition to the market. Um, like um, Channel 4, um, I think they, they also they, they do this kind of um, revenue share models and like innovative sales model for quite a while. And um, I also think that uh, over the time now, they, they will get more and more also into investment models. And uh, I'm just looking forward how it will develop with them because um, they are a very good partner with very, very smart target grouping and a very good sense of business. Yes? Um, yes, of course, Studio 71, as you mentioned, is a little bit of a um, reaction, of course, of, um, I would say, this, this time or this lifespan, people watch less television, which is typically between 10 and 17, 10 to 18 years old, which, of course, for many consumer brands is the starting point of locking consumers into, like, the brand. Um, of course, with Studio 71, we bridge this, but we also see um, that... The, uh, the consumer or the, the television watcher comes back after he left television. So it's a certain time where he right now relies on other sources of media, and then over time he's adding up uh, television as a natural source, which is actually quite, uh, quite logic, as television serves with the highest rate of curation. Um, I think television, ever since it exists, is very smart in um, creating a very smart program that uh, just creates like this, um, yeah, this simple just watch it attitude so you don't have to think yourself. So that's why television is, uh, is still so popular. We are, we are curation experts. Well, we see it, um, there is research ongoing, but we see them once they hit the 20s, they are um, they're aligning again. Um, typically, when they are um, out of school, going into the job, suddenly television with, uh, with the comfort zone is getting more important again. So, any more questions? Travel is about emotion. And... Um, there is no other um, media channel that can transport emotions as good as television. And uh, we see also travel as a very transitional product. Um, like, it's one of those products, maybe uh, apart from books, that almost fully switched online. So um, we could support um, our digitalization strategy quite efficiently also by saying we have an emotional product that has a, a very high load in online affinity and then we, of course, had with um, Vetter, with the Vetter uh, website, we had a perfect traffic feed to actually, uh, to actually stimulate the whole segment for us, as traffic is a very, very profound source for traveling. So. Any further comments, questions? So. 
If not, I just uh, give you my, my details to contact me with any um, other questions uh, you might have on that. Thank you very much.